Welcome to another episode of Ozfish. Dave here, let's get some. Fish on! Beautiful silver coloured fish. Might be 70, close to 80. So yeah, I love to use um, circle hooks when I'm uh, chasing jewfish. Not a bad fish, but. Pinned him on that circle hook. That's one motherfucking big fucking flathead, yeah? yeah. Something on the middle, Rod. Not real big. You are kidding. How's that? Hey, Mr. Snapper came along and just hooked that live bait. Yeah, and pinned him on that circle hook. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about um, why I uh, choose to use circle hooks when I'm uh, dew fishing. And um, I'm also gonna um, give a demonstration in relation to um, how I use a small Dacron loop uh, on the back of the uh, the circle hook and uh, how I use that in conjunction with a cable tie. Uh, just slip through the front of the eyes of a, um, of a live bait and um, how effective it, um, that particular rig um, is in relation to, um, to catching dewfish. So when I'm uh, dew fishing using live bait, what I love to do is um, I love to use a circle hook. So here's a, uh, this is a 9 uh Gamagatsu uh, circle hook. Yeah, they're an amazing, uh, amazing looking hook as opposed to the uh, traditional uh, J hook. Um, but once you get your confidence up with a, uh, a circle hook and you get a number of fish underneath your belt, um, they really are an amazing um, fish catching tool. When I am using circle hooks, what I love to do is I love to use different size circle hooks um, depending on the size of bait I've got. Big yakka man, I've up me circle hook to a nine. <clears throat> so I'll use seven O's and I'll use eight O's and um, at the moment, um, I'm using nine o's a fair bit because at the moment uh, there's some really, really, really big uh, yellowtail around at the moment. The nine o just um, suits them um, really well. So I use both sorts of uh, circle hooks. Like uh, I love to use Gamagatsu. They make a fantastic uh, circle hook. This is a Gamagatsu inline big bait circle. It's just a little bit uh, heavier, thicker gauge, usually used for uh, for marlin fishermen. And what you can also get is the, uh, the Gamagatsu um, inline octopus circle hook. The octopus circle hook is just a, uh, it's a really nice thinner gauge um, hook. It's a great hook when um, when I'm using smaller yellowtail or smaller live baits and um, it works really well. But amazingly, what happens is it doesn't matter whether you use the thinner um, octopus style hook or you use the thicker uh, big bait circle hook, it just doesn't make any difference to your hook up rate. The juice got such a big mouth, it just, bait's going straight in and uh, yeah, it's just turning around, coming out and hooking right in the jaw of the mouth. So either or in the tackle shop, you can uh, use both, uh, but they both work fantastic. And the number one reason why I choose to use a, uh, a circle hook as opposed to using the um, traditional J hooks, like a single J hook or a, um, you know, a double hook rig with uh, J hooks, um, is because I'm releasing all the jewfish that I'm catching. That, that's why I do it. Um, if I was killing fish or taking fish, you know, like it's pretty easy to use a single J hook or a um, double hook rig with uh, J hooks, and um, it's very, it's a fantastic way to uh, catch a jewfish. And, I, and I, I suppose if you went out in the river and um, you saw all the guys were out there jew fishing, if you went around to all the different boats, I'd say that um, probably about maybe as high as eighty percent, maybe eighty five percent of those guys would be using um, J hooks, doing it the traditional way, and probably not a lot of guys out there chasing him with uh, one big single. Um, circle hook. So yeah, for me, 
the number one reason why I use a circle look is that, um, yeah, I want to release uh, all the dew that I cast. Yeah. Most of the time, probably about, you know, like about 90% of the time, the circle hook will give you this textbook uh, hook up right in the corner of the mouth. And um, yeah, they come out really easily. And um, yeah, you can just swim that uh, dew over the side of the boat and uh, let him go uh, to fight another day. So that's the number one reason why I use a circle hook. By using a, a, a bridle rig on my live baits, what it does is it just affords me a fantastic um, hookup yeah, rate. If I, if I get 10 strikes uh, from dewfish, nine out of 10 times, you know, I'll hit those uh, dew and hook them really successfully on a circle hook. Um, so your hookup rate is really, really, really high um, when you're using a circle hook. And um, that's the way the guys are uh, chasing marlin out, marlin outside. That's why they love to use a circle hook. And uh, there's different ways to attach the live bait, you know, like um, with rubber bands and Dacron loops and um, cable ties, lots of things to do. Um, but it hooks the marlin um, really, really, really well. Um, so, yeah, one of the number one reasons why I love to use a circle up is because um, your strike rate is really high uh, on the dew that you hit. Another amazing thing why I love to use a circle hook is that once that circle hook goes into the jaw of the mouth, um, yeah, you very rarely ever lose a fish. And I should imagine that once that circle hook goes in, right in the jaw hinge there, I could actually back the lever drag off on the reels I'm using, or you could click your bail arm over, and that fish could just swim around and around, around the boat on a completely slack line. And what will happen is that that circle hook will not come out. It will just go in once it's gone through into that uh, corner of their mouth. It just, it just won't come out. Yeah, so as opposed to a J-hook, sometimes what happens is that... Um, you know, you can hit fish on J-hooks and, um, you know, you've got to keep a bit of pressure on them and um, keep that line tight. And, um, yeah, you do fish will get these big, massive head shakes. And sometimes, um, yeah, you can um, you can pull your hooks um, a lot more easily on J-hooks than you will on a circle hook. And another advantage of bridle rig in my live baits is that those baits are actually going to swim head up into the current with that circle hook just sitting just up on top of their head in front of their eyes there. Um, so once they're swimming head up into the current, um, there's plenty of water flowing through their mouth and over their um, over their gills. And um, yeah, the live baits like that will stay alive for a long, long, long time. Like I've had big live baits um, swim and stay alive, uh, particularly really big baits uh, where they're not gonna get hit as much by brim and uh, things like that. I've had them swim for like three and four hours in a session and pull them in and they're actually still alive, still swimming on that circle. Yeah, man. That big yellow tail spun for four hours. Still alive on a bridle rig. Unbelievable. Another thing is too, you know, like is um, by bridle rigging them, by just putting a cable tie um, just gently through their eyes, it does the least amount of damage to the bait fish. You're not punching um, hooks up through, you know, bottom jaws and, and uh, through top jaws and doing damage to the fish like that and uh, you know stressing the, stressing the fish out even more or you know punching them through the nostrils and that kind of thing like that so um, yeah the, um, the bait fish are already a little bit of shock when you catch them outside in your live bait jigs and you drop them into your bait tank they're already pretty stressed and um, you know like you'll see some of your live baits die um, pretty quick um, in a live bait tank not many but but some of them and they must just it's just too much stress for them, and um, yeah, they, they just die really quickly. So any sort of damage to you, um, you do to that fish is adding additional stress, and um, sometimes it's you know they won't last um, quite as long. Another great advantage um, to using a um, a bridle rig on a yellow tail is that um, you have this fantastic strong bone structure. Uh, in front of the eyes of uh, particularly yellow tail, which is my favorite bait when I'm chasing dew. And what I'm not able to do is like, you can cast that bait for miles, put a lot of pressure in relation to your rod, throw a big sinker out. And um, yeah, what they do is they'll never actually just um, come off the hook or rip through the hook. So uh, being able to cast a, uh, a long distance um, with your rods is really good. Cool. Send me a 50 pounder. Usually, what I do with the big two outside rods, I'll throw that left hand back rod out a long way, and I'll throw the um, the right hand side back back rod out a long way. 
and uh, then I'll throw the other rods in shorter to, to put out a, uh, a good spread of live baits and so they don't compress and, and tangle up. But um, yeah, you can just cast a live bait a long way with a cable tie there. It just doesn't rip through their head. Like sometimes, yeah, if you put, um, if you punch fish up through the bottom jaw and top jaw or put them through the nostrils and things like that, you, you load up that rod with a big sinker. And sometimes what will happen is it's very frustrating. You can just rip that hook straight out on the cast. Um, so yeah, that's a, another um, major advantage to using a, a, a bridle hook. Bridle and a lot of people ask me on my videos like um, how I actually set my circle hooks up and um, how I'm actually rigging a bridle rig. So basically what I do is that like um, here's a, uh, a 90 Gamagatsu circle hook. And what I do is I just use a tiny little loop on the back of the circle hook made from 200 pound Dacron. Uh, this is black in color, but you could use white, doesn't really matter the color. And of course, you know, uh, when you're using a circle look, the best thing to tie, uh, best not to tie with a circle look is always is a, uh, is a form of a snell knot. So it's very important when you use a circle hook uh, that you use a snell knot. Um, there's different ways to tie uh, snell knots, and I'll go through the way that I actually uh, tie a snell knot, but um, yeah, using a snell knot on a circle hook um, is crucial um, to having the circle hook work in the most efficient way and for allow it to actually go into the fish's mouth and then um, when pressure comes on for that hook to uh, to turn around and hook in the jaw of the mouth and uh, yeah the snell knot in conjunction with the circle hook allows it to do that you'll get a little bit of a weird the hook lays a little bit weird um, when you use a snell knot on the circle hook, but that's how you want it. That's what actually allows it to actually turn around in the fish's mouth. And um, yeah, you really increase your hookup rate if you use a snell knot in conjunction uh, with a circle hook tied the right way. Okay, so you don't need a lot to put a little loop on the back of the circle hook. So I'm just gonna demonstrate with a 9 uh, Gamagatsu. This is actually a Gamagatsu 9 inline big bait circle hook. You can get them in uh, the uh, Gamagatsu octopus style circle hook, which are fantastic as well. A uh, little bit thinner gauge um, than the big bait circle hook, but the jewel got such a big mouth and when you're hunting big dogs, uh, yeah, whether you use an octopus um, you know, circle hook with a thinner gauge or whether you use this bigger, heavier, thicker gauge that you'd use when you were chasing marlin, doesn't really matter. It just, it just hooks perfectly in the corner of the mouth, you know, like, um, so yeah. So circle hook is black peat, black colored 200 pound um, Dacron. And uh, it works really well when you're making small loops. You don't have to use black, you can use whatever your color you want. It doesn't make any difference. You could probably get away with 150 pound, 130, 150 pound. I like 200. I like the 200 because it's a little bit thicker. The hook goes through it really well. Yeah, cigarette lighter. Pair of scissors. And yeah, here's a small piece of Dacron that I'm going to use to make the loop. So the First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the cigarette lighter and I'm just going to melt the end of the Dacron. Uh, you can see how it's furry uh, where all the threads are. So what I want to do is I actually want to just get the cigarette lighter, roll it around, wet my finger. And I just want to yeah, melt the end of the Dacron and it makes you go really hard. Stops the threads basically from coming apart. It won't work unless you, you melt the end of it. Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna basically lay the Dacron over. I'm gonna take the tip of the barb of the hook I'm going to just punch it straight through the center of the Dacron. 
maybe a mil or two mil from the uh, the melted end, right through the center. And once I get it through the center of the Dacron, I'm simply going to pull it up over the barb on the hook. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I like to turn the hook around, hold it in my left hand, and I just slide the Dacron up to the end of the barb. I'm going to form that tiny little loop that I'm going to need, and I don't need much of a loop to get uh, a cable tie through. And by pushing it up against the barb, I can pull against the Dacron. And what I can do is I can just find the center of it. And again, I'm just going to punch it through the center of the hook and slide it up over the barb. And effectively what I've done is I've just created a very small loop, which is really cool. Then all I need to do is trim it off. So I'm going to roll it over, put the, uh, the eye of the hook down. And I'm basically just going to cut it off with the scissors. And once I've done that, I need to melt the end again. It's very important that you melt the end of the Dacron. Otherwise the threads would pull apart and it won't hold on the hook. On hard, so I'm gonna roll that loop around And what I've done is I've created a beautiful, small, little loop on the back of that circle hook. And then what happens is, you know, like the, I'm using small cable ties and um, I'm putting, placing them through in the front of the uh, live baits eyes. And uh, what happens is a uh, cable tie is fairly stiff. So what it does is it goes through that loop beautifully. And I just um, tighten up the cable tie and... Uh, yeah, it works really well on the live bait, but that's the uh, basic idea of putting a, uh, a loop on the back of your uh, circle hook using 200 pound um, Dacron. Yeah, great for uh, great for dew fishing, be great for um, you know chasing pelagics outside, great for chasing marlin, that kind of thing like that. But yeah, very, very, uh, very cool thing to do. Okay, now that we've got the, uh, the small Dacron loop on the back of the circle hook, let's have a look at how I actually tie a snell knot onto the, uh, the circle hook. So I like to use um, Black Magic, tough fluorocarbon uh, leader. I like to use uh, that, uh, that tougher fluorocarbon when I'm dew fishing. It just stands up a little bit um, better than a, than a softer, more supple fluorocarbon. Um, you know, your traces will roll around on the bottom and, um, you know, you'll be uh, fishing through flathead and you'll be fishing through eels and, um, yeah, all sorts of sort of like uh, bycatch. So uh, yeah, the tougher fluorocarbon works really well for me. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do um, is I need to, to actually take out some fluorocarbon and cut it off the spool. So I usually like to cut off probably about close to a meter and a half. This is actually 50 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. I like, I like to use 50 pound when I'm dew fishing. Is I take hold of the circle hook and I put the eye of the hook to the right, face it downwards. Then I take my leader material and I place it on top of the hook. Right on top of that hook. Then what I want to do is I want to leave some tag end um, at the back there. It's probably three or four centimeters. And then what I do is, yeah, 
I'm going to create and form essentially a big loop. So I'm creating an overhanded sort of loop and I place that right on top of the hook as well. And again, I leave, leave a tag end of about three centimeters. So essentially I've got two sections of line sitting right on the top of my circle hook. Then I'm going to pinch those two bits of fluorocarbon together. And you can see how I have a large loop of line here. So I'm going to take the right hand side of that loop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a wrap and keep it very close to the back of the eye of the hook. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to wrap down that hook and sort of pinch it with my thumb and forefinger. And I usually like to go about eight wraps. And what I do is, yeah, I pinch it and the line will just twist up a little bit because, yeah, you're rolling it around the hook. And then what I'll do is I'll just begin to pull this leading tag end forward. But I'm using the thumb and forefinger to hold it in place. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling forward and I'm using my thumb and forefinger to hold it in place. And then basically I'll keep pulling until that back loop locks in place. Pull the back tag a little bit just to tighten it up. And then what I'm going to do is, now that I've got it in place, that's the hard part done. Now you'll notice here that the tag ends are actually sitting on the bottom of the circle hook, but I actually don't want them to sit there. I actually want them to sit up on top of the circle hook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just roll the whole knot around. Just pull it a little tighter. And I'm going to roll it around so now that the tag ends are sitting on the top of the hook. And that's, that's what I want. Okay. Okay. And you can see I've got really beautiful, nice wraps on that knot. Now what I want to do is you notice that I've tied this whole not so far and I have not placed any line through the eye of the hook. So now what I want to do is, yeah, I want to take this long tag end, I want to put it down through the back of the hook. It's really crucial that you come in through the back of the circle hook and get that like main leader coming through the back of the eye of the hook. I'm just going to trim that, trim that off pretty short. And now what happens is, yeah, I want that tag end to be sitting on top of the circle hook, not inside it. And that because, um, yeah, I don't want anything in the way when it's just going to roll around like in the fish's mouth. And uh, you can see how you've actually used the natural sort of memory in the line. And that's the kind of using the memory of the line like that is. is... So, yeah, in conclusion, you know, like I love to use circle hooks because I love to let the fish go. Um, there's a lot of advantages to, to using the uh, the bridle rig uh, in conjunction with the circle hook, um, as, as I've explained. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't tried a circle hook when you're, uh, you're dew fishing, um, definitely go out there and, uh, and give it a go. Um, if you haven't uh, tried bridle rigging um, your live baits with a small loop like that, definitely give it a go. Um, it absolutely uh, works for me and um, all the jewfish that I catch in my videos are uh, caught um, using circle hooks and uh, I bridle rig the yellow tail. Anyway, get out, grab a circle hook, make a loop, do some bridle rigging and see how you go.